So the development of female-bodied sex dolls and robots that are always ready and available for men's sexual use you know, raises some serious questions about the nature of consent. A sex doll, unlike a woman, has no needs to be met, and no free will to be exercised, no expectation of an equal or mutually beneficial partnership. A sex doll exists solely to provide sexual pleasure for its user. <coughs> With a sex doll or robot, men can have sex that is totally one-sided. It is sex predicated on men's absolute sexual freedom to dominate and use a woman, in inverted quotes, without limitations. There's no pressure to perform well, no need to reciprocate, no need to consider the other party's feelings, enjoyment, discomfort, humiliation or pain. It is the experience of sex with a compliant woman that is all about the user's sexual fantasies, with a woman, inverted commas, who never refuses and who can be used over and over again. In the roboticization of consent, lawyer Cinziana Gattu uh, describes what she calls the erosion of consent, and as male users get to experience sex with what is essentially a female sex slave. And she says, by design, sex robots do not have the ability to complain or reject the user. To the user, the sex robot looks and feels like a real woman who is programmed into submission and which functions as a tool for sexual purposes. The sex robot is an ever-consenting sexual partner and the user has full control of the robot and the sexual interaction. Some robots are intentionally programmed to refuse consent, like True Companion's Roxy Frigid Farrah personality. The company marketed this personality as being reserved and shy and who, if touched in a private area, will more than likely not be appreciative of your advance. So essentially what Frigid Farrah provides users with is the embodied fantasy experience of raping a woman.